Back in 1975, the number of Border Patrol agents in the United States was just over 1,700. Today, with more than 10 times that number, the U.S. Border Patrol is one of the largest and most well-funded enforcement agencies in the United States. A new documentary set in rural Arizona sheds light on how the agency's expansion has impacted one small community along the country's southern border. News Hour Weekend's Yvette Feliciano has the story. In the new documentary, Undeterred, filmmaker and activist Eva Lewis depicts life in the southern border town of Aravaca, Arizona. It's a community of fewer than 700, about 60 miles south of Tucson and 11 miles north of the Mexico border. Lewis moved to Aravaca in 2013 to volunteer with a local migrant aid group. People in Aravaca will talk about how in the 80s and even the early 90s, there was one Border Patrol agent who was responsible for the whole area around Aravaca, and you would see him maybe once a year. That began to change some 35 years ago. The administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards. Starting in 1994 under President Clinton, a U.S. Customs and Border Enforcement strategy called Operation Prevention Through Deterrence more than tripled the manpower and infrastructure along the border. Immigration checkpoints were positioned on all major roads in the area. Lewis says that today, Aravaca is what she calls a militarized zone. You'll be driving on the road and you might see one car or no cars of another resident, but you might see 10, 15 Border Patrol cars pass you. Uh, it means helicopters which fly low, uh, chasing people who um, they're looking for through the community. It means thousands of ground sensors that are buried, agents on horseback, on foot, on ATVs, and it means checkpoints every time you want to leave the community. Most residents don't work in Aravaca, and there is no elementary or high school in town. So every day, people leaving the community on the one road going north must pass through a checkpoint. So if you want to go to the hardware store, go see a movie, go to a grocery store that's bigger than the little store we have in town. Everybody has to pass through Border Patrol checkpoints. The documentary includes videos and first-hand accounts contributed by Aravaca residents, alleging unwarranted searches and verbal harassment by border agents at that checkpoint on Aravaca Road. Aravaca resident Jolene Montana speaks for many in the film. We're like, well, you know, we're U.S. citizens, why are you stopping us? They wouldn't give us any answers. They were very aggressive, uh, got us out of the, tr uh, the vehicle, threw everything out of the vehicle, went through all our purses. We were trying to film them on the phones, and they were like, nah, you can't do that. One of them had me up against the car right in my face. He had my ID, and he had my tribal ID. And he said, you, you know, you have no rights here. Aravaca residents Lisa Jacobson and Carlota Rey were also featured in the documentary. Border Patrol operates with pretty much impunity, and uh, it doesn't operate like any other law enforcement. Uh, it's not really civilian, it's not really military, it's not like a sheriff's department or police department where if you have a complaint, um, it may not get the result that you wish, but at least there are civilian boards of oversight, uh, ways to handle things. Um, and, but that doesn't exist in Border Patrol. Filmmaker Eva Lewis says U.S. Customs and Border Protection did not respond to her request for an interview for the documentary. PBS NewsHour Weekend also reached out to CBP for an interview or written statement for this report, but the agency did not respond. The documentary highlights local activism through the volunteer group People Helping People in the Border Zone, or PHP, which formed in 2012. And we're here to deliver this petition. Residents are shown petitioning for the removal of the checkpoints on Aravaca Road. This checkpoint must go. Yeah. Since 2014, PHP volunteers have monitored from a distance how agents conduct stops. That year, the group says it submitted information related to more than 2,300 vehicle stops to a data scientist at the University of Arizona for analysis. Latinos were 26 times more likely to show identification at the checkpoint than non-Latinos. And they were 20 times, 20 times, not 20 percent, but 20 times more likely to be pulled into secondary inspection. When the, I go with my sister or my brother-in-law or even my own kids or grandkids, uh, 
because of the color of the skin, they usually ask more questions. Most of Aravaca's residents are white, but it does have small native and Latino populations as well. Carlota Rey, who was born in Mexico, is a naturalized American citizen and has lived in Aravaca since 1980. But it really still hurts my feelings because it's, I mean, there are agents on each side of the, your car with heavily are, and I don't know what they'll do, you know. But Ray says racial profiling isn't her biggest concern. The Border Patrol strategy, Operation Prevention Through Deterrence, closed off traditional ports of entry from Mexico into the U.S. closer to main roads and highways, rerouting migrants to some of the most barren areas of the desert. In the last 20 years, more than 3,000 migrants have died in Arizona's borderlands, according to the Pima County Office of the Medical Examiner. Ray says those who do survive the journey often end up lost and in desperate circumstances in the town of Aravaca. They come very ill to our doors, to our backyards, and it's a very bad experience. And only the person that goes through that knows how it is. I always keep my eyes open to see if I see anyone in the side of the road because I have found somebody dying in the side of the road. So it's like something that, that's always in the back of my head. Filmmaker Eva Lewis hopes the documentary will give people outside of border communities insight into how they too could be affected. I think people should be really concerned about what it means to dehumanize one group of people and what that can mean in terms of it bleeding into all parts of society and, and daily life for everyone.